Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verses 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Wise men is here, the Magi, kings from the far east. It don't say how many they were. The storyline that many use at Christmas usually uses three. Uh, and that's okay. There's nothing sinful about using three, but the Bible don't actually say how many. Amen. It just says they came. Somebody say they came. Uh, the, who did? The wise men. And they came seeking Jesus. Somebody say wise men still seek Jesus. I mean, yes, popular phrase, and it's worthy of being repeated. Amen. The word now right here in Matthew 2 just simply means after. After Jesus was born. And somebody say it was Bethlehem. Bethlehem in Hebrew means the house of bread or the house of God's provision. Bethel means house and Lehem is the bread, house of bread. Judea, amen, somebody say Judah. Somebody shout Jesus was born in a place of praise. And friend, if you're going to birth in the Christ and his anointing and the anointed one and all he does, it's always going to be birth. It always has to start in praise. Come on, it's the midwife of praise that ushers in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Anywhere in your life and mine, amen? Hallelujah, but that ain't what I come to preach. Hallelujah, next Sunday night we'll have us a Holy Ghost show sure enough Christmas party. I got a message going there. Hallelujah, but today we're gonna deal with this and the night the Holy Ghost has got stuff in my spirit. Somebody shout, he's acting like a pastor now a little bit. He's, God's actually showed me six messages ahead of time. Hallelujah, which is something unusual for me. Not that I got a hundred, uh, amen, things laid out about them. I don't know much about them, praise God, except what, amen, may be scribbled down and highlighted right here. Hallelujah, but it is starting. God's doing stuff, and he's done stuff like that with me in the past. Amen, tonight we're gonna get into something about the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ himself. We're gonna get into the gifts of the Spirit. God's gonna show us about some gifts because that happens to be the, the very thing that's noted at this time about gifts, 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 gifts. But we're going we're gonna to get into some spiritual gifts. That's the eternal ones. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So somebody shall going to have Holy Ghost throw down tonight. Amen. He's going to throw down some devils. That's what he's going to do. Amen. Uh, and, and so these wise men came from the east of Jerusalem, saying, this was the message they brought, where is he that's born king of the Jews? For we have seen this star in the east and have come to worship him. This star means we have seen this star. I guess everybody was seeing it. And so they just noted out this star. I'm, I'm sure at that time right there, they were actually pointing at it. Daytime or night, there it is. And this is the first place and the only place the star is even mentioned in Scripture. You know, and it's okay, and what I'm about to say don't mean it's wrong that people show the manger scene and, and show all the donkeys and the sheep. And there's still a lot of sheep and donkeys that gather together around the manger scene today. In church. But anyhow, in the church say hee-haw. <laughs> Somebody shout, there's two kinds that come to church, sheep and donkeys. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But, but this was not when the star was seen. The star wasn't, so to speak, seen up in the sky leading these wise men actually the night Jesus was born. What actually shone in the sky the night Jesus was born is in Luke chapter 2. Amen. When the glory of God... Verses 10, shone round about those shepherds who verses 8 says was in their fields watching over their sheep by night. So the light that lit up the sky the night Jesus was born was the glory of God and the angelic host that was singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace toward men and goodwill toward men, Luke 2, 14. And we got into that last Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So the light that's from this star that these wise men who've came from the east are talking about is something they've been following. I don't know how long, Bible don't say it. Hallelujah, but they've been following it for some time because they came all the way from the far east. Uh, it could have been days, it could have been months, weeks, it could have been at, at the least, I'll show you, at least two years. 
But they had been following his star. So Jesus now in verses one of Matthew two is after. Somebody say after he's born. It don't mean now when he was born. It means after he was born. Hallelujah. So they came following this star and they were asking. This is what they were saying. This was their pursuit. This was their message. This was their quest. Where is he that's born king of the, Jew, king of the Jews? So Jesus had already been born. Hallelujah. And they were wanting to know where is he. Somebody shout. They were wanting to know him. You notice they weren't worshiping the star. They were wanting to find him so they could worship him. Hallelujah. And verses three, when Herod heard, or Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Somebody shout, they were troubled. Why were they troubled? It's go on, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes, somebody say the religious folk, of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Now they're about to quote Micah chapter five, verses two. Micah the prophet prophesied this hundreds of years before it ever came to pass. Verse six, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. The word rule there actually in Greek means to feed them. Praise God. Remember Brother Michael was preaching from Psalms 100 about the sheep, and he's the shepherd. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. So right here, Herod looked to the religious Pharisees and, and to those crowds that were religious uh, and wanted to know what the scrolls, the scriptures had said and foretold about this king that these wise men come to worship because surely he'd seen the star himself. Everybody in Jerusalem had. And all the religious sects and crowds and, and, and Judah and, 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 and or excuse me, in Jerusalem, they were all troubled along with Herod. They were troubled about, oh Lord, this king that's coming. This king that's coming. Hallelujah. And listen, verse seven, then Herod, when he privately called the wise men, in other words, he got them away from the crowds, and he really these crowds and, and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Notice the wise men wanted to know where he's at. Herod only wanted to know what time did the star appear because he had in his mind murder right then. In other words, the only way I'm going to find where this child's at, I got to know when the star appeared and that'll let me know probably his age. That's what he was saying. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search digitally for the young child. Now, it's not a babe no more. Jesus ain't a babe no more. He's a young child. And when he had found him, he said, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Not the baby, but the young child. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. Now, it didn't say when they saw the star, they rejoiced and, and with exceeding joy praised the star. They didn't worship the star. Because verse 11 said, and when they had come into the house, somebody shout, this weren't a manger. This weren't a cold cave on the side of a mountain. This weren't an animal star. Hallelujah. This was actually a house where Mary and Joseph and Jesus were now living. And they saw the young child. He was not a babe. That's three times it says young child with Mary, his mother. Hallelujah. And fell down and worshiped him. Notice it didn't say they fell down and worshiped her. They fell down and worshiped Jesus, the young child. Hello, somebody. They didn't worship Mary. They didn't pray to Mary, but they prayed like Mary prayed. They prayed to Jesus. They didn't praise Mary, but they praised like Mary did. They praised Jesus. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost? Anybody that's worshiping Mary, though she was highly favored and hailed, blessed among women, is worshiping or necromancing, as Deuteronomy 18 says not to do, which is consulting with the dead. You shouldn't praise and pray to somebody dead. 
Some would argue, well, Jesus is, uh, but Luke 24 and 5, the angel said he's not here, but he's risen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, we ain't praising a dead king. Oh, we're praising a live returning, coming in the clouds, uh, shouting king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So they didn't worship her, and Joseph ain't even mentioned. He's there. But why ain't he mentioned? He ain't mentioned because he ain't the father. (laughs) Anybody here Holy Ghost? Mary had her role in it. She was the virgin that God selected and chose. Amen. But somebody shout, we should never be praying and praising someone, even Mary, because she's a dead saint. Now, she's alive in heaven. Come on, somebody. Ain't no doubt. Hallelujah. Amen. But she's dead. Somebody say she's dead. Hallelujah. There ain't no difference in praying to Mary than there is praying to a fat man in a red suit and sending him letters. Uh, Come on and teaching your children to do the same thing. It's all necromancing. You're telling people to talk with the dead and to send your request to the dead. You mean you just did that, Brother Marvin? You mean you just slapped us, that old religious thing right upside the head? We got some that say, yeah, I believe you shouldn't be praying to Mary. No, sir, brother, I believe you. Well, in the same sense, you shouldn't be praying to a dead saint named Nick either. Whether it's a dead saint called Mary or a dead saint called Nicholas. There ain't but one you should be praying to, and that's King Jesus. John 3, 27 says, no man can receive anything except to be given to him from heaven. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Uh, the only one you should be teaching your children to pray to is Jesus. Uh, the only one you should be telling your children to look to, uh, to be blessed or helped or anything, somebody shout, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. And when Herod heard all these things, he was troubled with all Jerusalem Hallelujah. But listen, in verses 11, as they entered the house, they worshiped. The young, when they saw the young child and Mary's mother, they fell down and worshiped him, the young child Jesus. And when they had opened the treasures, their treasures, that means they had brought him a gift, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. Heard a little girl one time, she was trying to quote that scripture in Sunday school. I can't remember where I read this at. But she stood up and said, uh, teacher, I can quote it. And she said, okay. She said, they, they brought unto Jesus their treasures and they presented unto him gifts of gold, common sense, and mirth. Ah, that'll work, won't it? <laughs> Lord, give everybody we know, including ourselves, this Christmas, the gift of common sense. Especially them politicians, Lord, give them a double portion. Common sense, that'll work. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to here, they departed into their own country another way. In this chapter, I'll get into it as the month continues, even toward the end of the month. Hallelujah, because there's so many messages right here. But here's the thing I want you to see in this message. We know the true meaning of Christmas. Notice how I pronounce it with the T in it. We've been teaching that. Christ, because it ain't about Chris Kringle. It's about Christ Jesus. And as Christ followers, we're not trying to keep Christ in Christmas or Christmas. We're trying to tell everybody he is Christmas. Come on. Hallelujah. So we see that it's been under attack for centuries. Uh, the distorting of the story with figures and fables, uh, distracting through advertised merchandising of, so to speak, not holy day, but holiday. You know, holy day's been changed into holiday. It was originally just hol- holy day. Now it's become holla, holiday. And, and, and so, so today, but we see a new kind of attack over Christmas. And I'm about to preach something that I preached years ago to a witch on Facebook. This revelation God gave me, he gave it to me like this in a moment when a witch had got on Facebook and it weren't, it weren't actually my actual Facebook page. It was through somebody else's, but they tagged me in it because they was like, help, help, help. 
And this witch had her stuff down far as uh, genealogies and timetables and, uh, and she was uh, proud to let everybody know she was a Wiccan, she was a witch. And because uh, and, and somebody had just posted something on Facebook about Christ and about it being Christmas and it was just a short little thing about where to worship him. He's the reason for the season, something like that. And oh, here come this witch and she had, you know, you know Christians, and I like to refer to us as Christians, amen, uh, Christ followers, uh, when they don't know what to say from the Bible, they usually get mad. So, and then they start jousting, just jousting, hello, and attacking everybody. Amen. Best thing to do, if you don't know how to answer, find somebody that does, ask for help, or go seek God and find what the Word says. You can throw your argument all day, but if you ever throw the book, because a man that's had an experience with the book and the one who is the book, Jesus Christ, uh, they're never at the mercy of anybody else that's got an argument. And this witch had all her genealogies and timetables down, historian she was. She even was a historian, which she was, oh, I guess she'd have been some history teacher somewhere, somewhere. And, and all she wanted to talk about is history says, history says. And I'd reply to her, but his story says. Because history that is accurate is his story. Because he's Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, first and last. Revelation 22 and verse 13. Come on, somebody. He declares the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46 and 10. So she wanted to talk about history, and I just broke it down and with Scripture and put a little dash between the S and the S in history and said, his story. Because that's what it's about. And so the attack, and it's become a thing. If you ain't heard of it yet, you go and hear it. It came up years ago, and it still has come up. People like to do it. But what's the sad thing? It comes up among the religious. It comes up among even those attending the house of God. And they don't even realize that it's the spirit of Antichrist to attack that he came and is coming again and some of them are sitting in church, some of them stand in pulpits and this is what they say, just like that witch told me. You should not be celebrating Christmas even as a Christian because history says that he was born in the spring of the year and not on December the 25th which is traditionally the time y'all Christians gather together and will worship so to speak some God who hung on some cross and died somewhere I mean she was just kidding she said but history teaches it was in the spring of the year not in the month of December and surely not on the 25th and that was her argument and a lot of the saints were jousting her son boy they was coming back out her attacking but nobody was throwing the book and all she wanted to say was history 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 and so I made it about his story and I went to Matthew 2 hallelujah and listen I'm reading I'm gonna post this on Facebook when I get through this is what I made after amen that encounter with that witch uh, somebody say that Christmas witch praise God hallelujah that historian amen and I said uh, listen I, as I went into it I said uh, uh History reveals that Jesus was not born on December the 25th. Somebody say history does. That's, that's accurate history. Okay? We're not debating that. But rather, in the spring of the year, so we should not have anything to do with Christmas seeing we don't know how the exact date of his birth came. We don't really know the exact date. So she was saying you shouldn't be even celebrating Christmas at all. We got preachers standing in pulpits telling saints in the church you shouldn't even be celebrating Christmas. They're operating, operating in the same spirit of error that that witch did. And I'm about to prove it to you. Because First Timothy chapter 1 verses 4, the Bible said we're not to take heed to fables. Fables. Somebody say fables. As our president would call it fake news. That's what a fable is. It ain't the gospel good news, it's fake news. Fables, anything that's associated that distorts, 
Come on, somebody. The doctrine of Christ that dilutes the doctrine of Christ uh, that mixes up the message. Uh, hey, man, with the fake, uh, it mixes into the faith. Come on, somebody. Associating Jesus, if you don't believe it. Uh, hey, man, just look tonight just in the length it takes you to get home, uh, whether it takes you a while or takes you a few moments. Uh, you're surely to either see a department window or you'll see somebody's yard and you'll see Santa Claus with Rudolph and all his reindeer. Hey, man, Donner, Blister, and I mean, Blister. And you, you, you'll, you'll see all of them and right next to them you'll see a little manger scene with Mary and Joseph and the donkeys and the cows and, and the pigs and the sheep and the star and the straw oh come on somebody, somebody shout we got a mixed up world we got a mixed up church as far as that goes come on somebody amen because it's all just got mixed up let's just mix in a little bit of Jesus a little bit of Saint Nicholas come on I had Santa Claus years ago from the mall amen get in my cross Pray, or I got in his. Uh, rather, come on, somebody. He was attacking me on Facebook because I defended Santa Claus. Because I was preaching this stuff. And I'm still going to preach it. Santa Claus, you ain't nothing but a, a somebody like these people that make a living dressing up like Elvis. We know that ain't even Elvis. <laughs> you make and do your pelvis like Elvis, but that don't make you Elvis. Blue. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you're, we know you ain't Elvis. You can dress up like Santa Claus, but we know that ain't him because St. Nicholas is dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And, 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 and so all of that, God says, don't take heed to the fables. First Timothy chapter one, verses four. But he said also endless, say that with me, endless, unending genealogies. That means the debates over timetables and dates. So God says, I don't want my people taking heed following after fables that mix the message of faith dilutes the doctrine of Christ because Colossians 2 and 8 uh, the Bible said let no man deceive you by any means he said don't let uh, anyone uh, amen cause you to go after that that's after the rudiments of this world come on after philosophies uh, amen and not after Christ Colossians 2 and 8 so we understand that level but he also said, I don't want you taking heed being deceived by endless genealogies. People that love to argue about timetables and dates. Because in Matthew 2, the message weren't the day. The message weren't the time. The message weren't the day, the date, or the time. The message was Jesus. He's come. And I don't care when he came. I know he came. I don't care, hey man, what time he came. I know he came. I could care less what day and what date. All I know as he came. Hallelujah. Because Luke 2.11 said, for unto you is born this day. Them angels didn't say nothing about a date. They didn't give us a date because God knew if he did, mm, that'd be church's name. The only church of the date of Jesus fellowship or something. Amen. Them angels didn't even say what day it was. They just said this day. Is born unto you a Savior in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord, Luke 2, 11. So somebody shout, that's all we need to be concerned about, that it was a day. It was actually night time, but it was so bright with the glory of God that lit up the sky and the angels singing, praise God, in Luke 2, that the angels called the night day. Look at your neighbor, say, if Jesus is in your life, you ought to call the night seasons your life daylight. Because God's glory shows up in the dark. That's another whole message. I'm getting in the last Sunday nights. That would have been a good place to interject it. Praise God, but anyhow. Praise the Lord. So people that get caught up on that weren't the date. December 25th, ain't the day he was born. He was born in the spring of the year. Look at your neighbor and say, who cares? Nobody knew the date. 
God didn't tell us the day he was born. He just told us he was born on this day. Somebody shout this day. When is it? I don't know. All I care about is this day. His day. Not a date, but a day. All I know is God said there was a time called this day. Matthew chapter 24, 36. Jesus said, the day of my coming, hallelujah, no man knows, not even the angels, but my father. In Mark 13, 32, Jesus said, no man knows and the angels don't and even I don't. Even the son don't. And somebody just thought right then, ooh, if Jesus didn't know, that means he was a little bit short of being sovereign. No, it weren't. I'll explain why. Anybody want to know why? The reason Jesus said the son don't even know the day of the hour, because when he said that, he was the son of man, not just the son of God. Hey man, Hebrews 10, 5, he said, but you have prepared me a body. That was the one that was born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Ghost in his body now as a man at 33, right before he goes to the cross. He knew, but he was letting them know, I'm not just here as the son of God. I'm here as the son of man. I'm about to take the sins and sicknesses of the whole world. Hallelujah. In my body on a tree. The reason Jesus said not even the son knows didn't mean he was sure to be in sovereign. He was letting them know I am the almighty son of God manifested in the flesh, but I'm also the son of man. I hurt like you hurt. I'm tempted like you are, except I don't sin. Now I'm about to suffer on this cross because he was trying to let them know I'm not just the son of God because that was what they were wanting to see. They was wanting to see some divine embodiment of God, superhero. Come on, somebody, running the Romans out of town and taking over the city of Jerusalem and giving it back to God's people. And oh, they wanted a political king, not a spiritual one. And so Jesus had to keep their mind on who he was here. Though he was the son of God, he was the son of man. The son of man, that's him that's about to take all this to the cross and pay for it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Jesus said, no man knows the date or time. Somebody say his second coming. Well, nobody knew the date and time of his first one. Only people to actually tell us would probably be Mary and Joseph. And look at your neighbor and say, you better not be praying to them. They dead. They in heaven. Come on, you ain't gonna get no answers from them until you get to heaven. Then you can look them up. Come on now. Holy Ghost. Praise God. God ain't gonna reveal no date because he knows, sure as they do, everybody's gonna worship the date instead of his son. Look at your neighbor and say, don't look for the date, just date the son. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Have an encounter with him. Friend, I don't know the date when he came, but he came. I don't know the date when he's coming again, but he'll come. Hi, ain't about to hear Holy Ghost. What are you waiting for, Christmas? You ever hear people say that? What are you waiting for, Christmas? Look at your neighbor and say, yep. I'm waiting for Christmas. I ain't talking about December the 25th because we ain't preaching about a date. We preaching about a day that Matthew 24 verse 44 declares, be ready for in an hour and day you think not the son of man is coming. So you better watch out. You better not doubt. You better not lie. I'm telling you why. Jesus Christ, he's not only coming to town, he wants to come into your life. He wants to come into your house. My my God, preacher, he wants to come back in your church. He wants to come, but I'm telling you, he's coming. And that's what he told me to preach this morning. It ain't about a day. It ain't about a date. It ain't about a time. It's about he came and he's coming again. Somebody shout. That's what we waiting on. We waiting on the Christ one to come again. If he came once, he's coming back again. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into the heavens for this same Jesus? that you see taken away from you shall come again in like manner. Acts 1 11. Somebody shout, Christmas is coming. A lot of people just get caught up at the manger scene and that's where they want to stop. 
My God, if you're going, if you're going to present the holy nativity, the manger scene, put up a cross. Ah, then put up a real live Jesus a figure, a, amen, in glory coming in the clouds. Oh, because you can't talk about him coming and not talking about him not coming again. Oh, that's what I see. He came once, but he's coming back. Ready or not, here he comes. Glory! My Lord. Mm. 